Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So, I have been pretty complaining the last couple days. I made two reviews that were pretty negative, one being on the, uh, the long shot over here, and two being on... <laughs> the Elite 2.0 Ace. I think it's time to change things up a little bit. I'm going to introduce you guys to a blaster I'm actually pretty happy with, and that is the Fortnite BAR. No one likes this blaster. This thing is heavily hated. Why is that? Let's try and find out. So the Fortnite BAR, which stands for Burst Assault Rifle, this blaster is very interesting because it is the first blaster in the Fortnite series that's a Raven reskin, Bullpup. That means that this is the first blaster that's actually a Bullpup in the Fortnite series, which is pretty cool because we don't really get Bullpups in Nerf very often. I mean, the Moto Blitz is the latest Bullpup that you can still buy, but ever since then, it was pretty much just this, and then there was a very long gap of time between when the Raven came out and when this thing came out. And this blaster was very interesting to say the least, but we gotta give it a full chance and we gotta start with the design. Yeah, it looks very, very silly. It is a super silly looking blaster. It is, it's, it's silly. It's really silly. There, I, I don't know what else to describe this blaster as. There are so many goofy angles that I just don't understand why they are. It's so oddly rounded front to back and like so curvy when like side to side the blaster is actually pretty angular and pretty well balanced and it's a very weird design that I don't know how to feel about. I don't mind the design that much but I do know people who really really hate this design because it's just not traditional at all. It looks wonky, it looks confusing, it's super tall right in the middle and then super chunky in the back and super streamlined in the front and of course Fortnite muzzle brake. It is, it is a weird design, but I personally really, really dig it. It is cool, it is loud, it is proud, and it is completely different than anything else in my whole collection. And of course they didn't paint both sides, but they did at least do this sort of camo wrap thing on both sides, which is pretty cool. But let's talk ergonomics. I just said, what the hell is wrong with me? But let's talk ergonomics now. We got a main grip, we got a foregrip, and we got a stock. The whole three-in-one package. The main grip is a little bit questionable, but overall, I'd say this is a pretty good solid grip. It's not too big, but it isn't small at all. It's the perfect size for just about anybody to get their whole hand around comfortably. And it is a little bit too sharp on the back, but I can forgive it because it is pretty comfortable nonetheless. As for the stock, it's really close to being the perfect length. Look at this. It is a really, really good length stock, and it is very, very comfortable. It is flat on the back with this nice angle to it, and the whole top of the blaster is perfectly flat, so it works as a very comfortable cheek rest that conveniently perfectly aligns your eye with the scope. And I'm not sure if this translates to anybody who's using this blaster, but I know it works really well for me. The ability to look through this scope is effortless and seamless, and it works every single time. As for the foregrip, this is the only one that I'm really on the fence with. This foregrip is basically like holding onto a Coke can. It is perfectly circular and there really aren't any details on there at all except for these two like sort of dark gray piece of plastic that have been clipped on from the front and the back. But honestly having it that simple works in its favor because it provides a nice comfortable place to put your hand that doesn't feel overly like stimulating. It's not weird to put your hand on this. It feels natural. You're just holding the foregrip of a gun. It works very well and I'm like actually conveniently looking through the scope because that's how perfect it is. Here's something that I want to address. In the original game, the blaster had four tactical rails on the top that were Picatinny. This has four tactical rails on the top that are Nerf compatible. They put the four rails on top of the scope on the blaster. Why did they do that? I have no idea, but I'm so glad that they did because that is an awesome attention to detail 
that you wouldn't expect them to catch on to. There's no reason for these rails to be here, but they're there anyway because they were there on the original source material. I love when Hasbro does little things like that. Let's talk triggers. This blaster has a rev trigger, a main trigger, and a mag release back here. Being a bullpup, the mag release isn't up here. But let's talk about the rev trigger and main trigger first. The rev trigger is actually pretty snappy. It presses in a little bit and then immediately locks. It's not anything good like the strife trigger, but it's actually pretty good, and it's a pretty good size so that anyone with any size finger can hold on to it. As for the main trigger, oh no, Hasbro, Hasbro, why? Hasbro, please. Okay, we'll get back to this in a little bit, and I will explain what is so bad about the main trigger. As for the mag release, it's not the best, but it definitely works. It is literally the same mold that's on the Strife. I'm pretty sure that is actually the same mag release that's on the Strife, but with a different bottom to it, so it'll fit directly. And it just pushes right in like a button. So you put your mag in, you push it up, you push the button, you can pull the mag out. I have had some issues with taking the mag out because the mag release is a little bit too far away from the actual mag well, rather than being like pushed up against it like on a Raven. Instead, you have to push up on it. So it's a little bit fiddly to actually take the mag out, but it works all right. With that said, let's get onto the functionality. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine-fed semi-auto flywheeler. You put your magazine in, you rev, you fire. The rev up time of this blaster is, shut up, the rev up time of this blaster isn't the best, but it does actually sound pretty competent when you rev it up. It definitely sounds better than the motors in something like the Moto Blitz or even the Storm Charge. This blaster sounds like it packs a punch, and honestly, it really does, as you'll see in the firing demo. But I want to quickly address putting the mag in and taking the mag out. It is pretty smooth, it's a pretty nicely designed mag well, however there's one glaring issue. The design of the magwell itself has an inverted angle, which means that it's basically the same thing as having a flared magwell with the flare facing the wrong way. So putting mags in is very deliberate and very, very easy to screw up. I'm sure with enough practice, and I mean a ton of practice, you could get used to putting the exact spot every single time, but I highly doubt that'll happen with anyone because, well, not very many people like this blaster. With that said, let's get on to the firing demo. In the wise words of Dank Pods, the guy who I have learned half my jokes from, all right, we're well, in a nugget. Here we go, mate. <sighs> So the Fortnite BAR. There is one real issue with that, and that is the main trigger. It is very, very squishy, and I'm pretty sure that just comes down to the complex mechanism that is the bullpup style pusher system that was invented all the way back with the Henstrike Raven, and really hasn't changed up until this day. But other than that, this blaster is genuinely really, really cool, and I'm not quite sure why people hate it so much. I think that the blaster is very comfortable, very well designed, very easy to use, very fun to use, and it quite it packs quite a punch out of the box for a stock Nerf flywheeler. Way more than you would expect for a Nerf Fortnite blaster at the very least. And there is one really big pro out here that I haven't even brought up, and that is the fact that this uses C batteries instead of double A's. Why is this a big deal? Because most people really like double A's. Big battery door. Big battery tray. Very easy to fit a lipo in here. So whenever somebody mods this thing, and you probably will because come on, it's like, this is a good platform to use. I really, really like this platform. Putting a lipo in this blaster is going to be an absolute breeze because it'll just fit inside the battery tray since the battery tray is absolutely huge. And that is a really big plus. Being able to easily fit lipos in without having to get an extended battery door or something like that is always a plus because that's less money that you have to spend on parts. 
but I really do like this blaster. I really, really do. I think this blaster is very fun and enjoyable to use. I can get around the smushy trigger and get used to it because of the everything else that this blaster does. The performance, the function, the design, the usability, the like everything that this blaster is doing, it is doing in a good way. And I can forgive the one issue it has because it really isn't that much of an issue to begin with. And for the price you're paying for this blaster, I honestly think it's worth it. If you want to get a Fortnite BAR, I will link it in the description below. With that said, thanks for watching. Bye.